Welcome to September's Leaco Challenge. Today's problem is image overlap. Two images are given represented as binary square matrices of the same size. Binary matrix, uh, matrix has only zeros and ones as values. We translate one image however we choose, sliding it left, right, up or down, and place it on top of the other image. After the overlap of this translation is the number of positions that have one in both images. Say we're given two images like this. Uh, currently there's only one overlap, the one in the middle, everything else is going to be zeros. But if we shift it right and shift it down one, we can see this one shape is going to overlap with this shape here. That's going to be equal to a three. Now, in order to solve this, it's best to start thinking first brute force. What's the straightforward method of doing this? And to do that, we would just go through every single cell and check to see if both of them are ones and zeros, right? If we shifted it right or left or whatever, we'd have some sort of uh, number that's going to uh, change the value at the x or y axis. So why don't we create some sort of helper function that's going to allow us to shift the first image right or left, make sure that this position is in bounds of, the, of this matrix, and then check to see if the values are the same. So because it's a square and they're the same size, we can just initialize n as the length of a or b, doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is write some sort of helper function. And we will pass in some value of x and y. And these are going to be the shift values for how we shift our first image. So first we'll have some number. Let's initialize that to 0. And we'll say for row in range of n and for column in range of also n, let's make sure that when we shift our x and y that this is in bounds. So to do that, I will say if r plus, well, let's start with the column, if column plus the x shift, that's right, uh, if that's in bounds, so it's 0, it's greater or equal to 0, and it's less than n. Now let's make sure uh, that the row is also the same case. We'll say r plus the y shift is less than n. And a, uh, we'll have to put in the shifted values here. We'll say r plus y shift and x, or not x, uh, column plus x shift. If this equals one and b, the original values of r, c also equal one then increase our number by one. After this, we'll go through our whole matrix and we'll return, well, whatever total num is. So great, now we have this helper method that's going to, like imagine if we passed zeros here, all it would do is go through every single cell and just check to see if both of them are ones. And if they are, then we'll increase number by one and just return the total after that. All right, so now that we have this helper method, it becomes pretty easy. All we need to do is check every single possible shift of left, uh, right, up and down that we can do. So, well, that's just for y, let's say, in range of, we can shift it all the way up, I guess, and that's gonna be negative n, or we can shift it all the way down, which is gonna be shift n. Uh, so same thing here with x, for x in range of negative n to n, and we'll just pass in our helper method here. Say helper, x, y, and how about we do this in a list comprehension, like that. So just to check to make sure that this is working the way we think it's supposed to, let's print it out, and see what the values of returns are. Uh, you can see that it checks for one, these are one overlaps, and we can see that three in there, which is probably the one where you shifted right and down, right? So all we need to do is re return the max here. So that's it, just return the max of Whatever's inside this list, that should be a three. And now we can submit that. So that gets accepted. So that's surprising because this time complexity is pretty terrible. It's essentially a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop. So that's n to the uh, fourth power, but still works. This does work. Honestly, if you were able to program this during an interview, that would be um, enough to show me that you do know what you're talking about. But how could we do better? So there is a way to do better. 
obviously with these there's always always is and i basically saw this solution um what's going on here is we will go through all the i's and j's or x and y's inside of a and b and create a list of where all of them equal one and what this tells us here is all the xy points where values are one after that what we'll do is go through every single combination and create some sort of dictionary or hash and count up however numbers uh, where they equal the same linear like if we subtract the x uh, with the one in a and b and the y uh, with the one in, in b those values are going to be the value for the linear transformation um, required for them to be the same. So whatever numbers are in here, say that this is like one, one, maybe that's shifting right and shifting down. Those will count up to be the same values. So we can just return the max of that. If there are no values like that, then we'll just return a zero. So this would be much faster. Um, and this would also work, but going to the math of this, it's a little bit time consuming and I just don't have time on Sundays. So, uh, this is probably the optimal solution. I did see some solutions with like convolu convolution, convoluted networks, <laughs> um, but that seemed a little more complicated. I sh should know that kind of thing, seeing that I'm in data science, but um, for some other time. All right, so thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.